that it's been plenty of warning that our country's fundamentals are increasingly deteriorating and currently in a dismal state. Recent examples are the state of our Prime Minister's official residence and the state of the aircraft that transports them around the world. These provide a metaphor that the state of New Zealand fundamentals are desperately in need of repair or replacement, but those ones identified are only minor problems. Most of us would have noticed that everything else is a bit run down. Our infrastructure, our services are at breaking point. We need investment, but we don't have the money. The big three, education, healthcare, policing, have all been in decline over the last decade or so. We've watched GP clinics closing and the media industry crumbling, our roads deteriorating, and our largest city in gridlock for hours. Our immigration policies are in shambles. Last year, 40,000 Kiwis left and were replaced with 280,000 less skilled new arrivals. Also, our universities are run down. To further frustrate it, our police force is under-resourced and our judiciary appears to have lost its way. Property and infrastructure require major maintenance and the finance picture doesn't allow for the required investment. It might be too early to say our society is on the edge of collapse, but we're not far away and we need to stem the bleeding pretty damn quickly. Our new government have asked its departments to cut its costs by only 7.5%. That's nowhere near enough. Our healthcare workers, teachers, police are all underpaid and they are all highly regarded internationally. That's resulted in international recruiters all over them offering them more money in better economies, resulting in we're losing our best and brightest. I heard the police minister the other day say, we don't have the money, and he's right, but we have to find it. Like the teachers and nurses, we have to keep them. We need to cut the daylight out of our costs. So what we have to do first is identify what our most urgent and fundamental needs are. To me, that means investing our money in government services to gradually bring them back to the brink and make them fit for purpose. It means hospitals that are well staffed, well functioned and operate out of priorities that are fit for purpose. It means water services that don't leak. It means our children get a world class learning environment. It means a well paid police force delivering law and order to our communities. It means a judiciary that supports our police force. It means our people coming home to New Zealand for money rather than leaving because of it. It means a strong independent media propped up by advertisers and viewers, not the government. Without an immediate ability to increase revenue, we need to instigate a major attack on all forms of government spending. But we're not talking about 7.5%. It's probably more like 20%, maybe even more. If we were a business, we would get out of things that don't add value. New Zealand has more than 70 ministries. That's not a bad place to start. Our government bureaucracies have become so large, so ineffective and so unreliable. When you get 1,700 people in the statistics department, you have to wonder, what do they do? That probably means salaries alone of $140 million a year. Then ask the question, how much of what they do do we really need? What would we lose if they lost 800 people? If so, could we have 800 more cops? We have 2,660 people in the Department of Conservation and another 1,050 people in the Ministry of Environment. Surely there's some overlap there. We need to cut bureaucracy and pay frontline. I'd rather pay teachers, police and nurses more and get the roads and water pipes fixed while creating less bureaucracy. In the meantime, the rest of us need to reduce our expectations for the next few years. Work a bit harder, a bit longer, for a bit less. Because if survival of the good ship Kiwi is at stake, then tough measures are essential. We are running out of time.